Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you James Cagney and Sylvia Sidney in Blood on the Sun. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your producer, Mr. William Keeley, who came to Hollywood with one of tonight's stars, James Cagney, and directed five of Cagney's most successful pictures, including The Bride Came C.O.D. and The Fighting 69th. Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Shortly before the war, when I was at the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo... I was amazed at the evidence of fascist might around me. Strutting German officers with swastikas, high-ranking uniformed Italians, and imperial Japanese mingling in a fraternity of arrogant aggression. Now that all that is ground to dust, I wonder more than ever how we managed to mistake the signs that pointed so clearly to Pearl Harbor, that infamous date of treachery that we observe this coming Friday. Suddenly, as it happened, we know now that Japan's attack was long and carefully planned, following almost to the letter a secret document known as the Tanaka Plan. Tonight's play gives an exciting interpretation of one of the world's great mysteries, the disposition of that document. It is William Cagney's screen hit, Blood on the Sun, starring James Cagney and Sylvia Sidney in their original screen roles. Some time ago, it was my privilege to direct Jimmy in a play on Broadway called Penny Arcade, a play which, incidentally, brought both Jimmy and me to Hollywood. And during these Lux rehearsals, we've had many chats about our old friends on Broadway. I have an interesting letter from one of those old friends, Elizabeth Justice. Elizabeth is an expert to whom literally thousands of theatrical costumes and fabulous stage draperies have been sent for cleansing. You can imagine what a responsibility that is. She reminds me that now we're both interested in the same business, the care of fine fabrics. She goes on to say, even for delicate fabrics, we know Lux is completely safe and that anything washable at all will come out of Lux suds as colorful as when it went in. It's our business to know the best. That's the way we feel about Lux. To Miss Justice, greetings and many thanks for those kind words. It's time for the first act of tonight's play, Blood on the Sun, starring James Cagney as Nick Condon and Sylvia Sidney as Iris Hilliard. These events begin and end just about the time when thousands of boys, now buried in places like Okinawa and Iwo Jima, and beneath the waters of the Coral Sea were flying their first kites or bringing home their first report cards from school. Yes, all this took place 15 or so years ago in a city called Tokyo, Japan. There was in Tokyo then a newspaper owned by an American and published for the English-speaking residents of Japan. One afternoon, the owner had two unexpected callers. Major Kajioka of the Imperial Army and Sergeant Oshima of the city police. Uh, but gentlemen, you must believe me, I knew absolutely nothing about this article being printed. You are the owner of the Tokyo Chronicle and you know nothing of its contents? Yeah, but I told you I was out of town till early this morning. Do you hear that crowd out there? Rioting and violence. Foolish students who believe what you have printed. Listen to this. According to Baron Tanaka's plan, if Japan wants to control China, Japan must first crush the United States. Lies. Lars, please. My managing editor will be here any second, though. No doubt he has excellent explanations. It is too for late the... for Mr. Condon's explanation. This is insult to a Balantanaka and Japanese people. Did you want to see me, Mr. Bickett? Get in here, Condon, and start explaining. Oh, hello, Major. Sergeant Oshma. Nick, look at these headlines. Have you gone out of your mind? Every word is a lie. Oh, now, just a minute. You must disclose source of your information. Police must know name of this traitor. Well, that's fair enough. The name of the traitor is the American press. Huh? That article is simply a reprint of what has already appeared in three New York newspapers. I cannot believe it. Check your counsel in New York. Very unfortunate. When American newspapers print slander, fine American people receive poor impression of Japanese friendship. Oh, I agree. 
There's one thing I hate, to give anyone a poor impression of Japanese friendship. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, you see, I told you it wasn't our fault. Yes. I am sure we can count on Tokyo Chronicle for cooperation. Come, Sergeant. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, good day. Uh, good day. Oh, you can't do this to me, Nick. Suppose they shut me down. Now, two years ago when I took over this rag, it was on one condition, that I run it. I know, Nick, I know, but you can't do Tired this. Tired of the deal? Oh, of course not, but printing rumors like this... I know now that it's more than a rumor. Or else those two birds wouldn't have called on you. I'll have Ollie Miller look into it. Look into it? You're going to write a retraction? I'll be happy to, when they prove the story's false. Nick, are you sure that piece was in the New York newspapers? New Yorkers were reading it yesterday. Yesterday? Then how could you have read it? Read it? <laughs> Boss, I wrote it. Nick, for the love of Mike, I... Wait, where are you going? To the Continental Cafe. I've developed a sudden thirst. Hi, Nick. I thought you'd be in jail by this time. Well, hello, Johnson. It's a nice throat you got, Nick, but somebody's going to have to slit it to save face. I heard the police have collected all the chronicles from the newsstand. Well, I hope you got your copy, Bogolov. Cable any part of it you want to Moscow. By the way, anybody seen Ollie Miller around? Oh, yes, yes, I have. Say, uh, who's that at the table there with Guffy? We just were asking the same question. Whoever he is, he's new. See you later, boys. I owe Guffy a drink. Meet Joe Cassell, just in from Shanghai. Oh, glad to know you, Condon. Scotch and soda? Why, thanks. Wait, huh? Three scotch and sodas. Say, let's see now. Let's see. Uh, Joe Cassell. Oh, yes, yes. Covered criminal courts for the old telly in New York, then went to Russia, and then Peking. Worked for the American Press Association for a while. Hey, that's a memory. Uh, Nick, uh, I was just in the foreign office. That story of yours has them buzzing like hornets. Yeah, what'd you dig it up? Oh, little here, little there. You know how it is. Of course, you know there's not a grain of truth in it. I don't know anything. Do you? Only that the Chinese are trying desperately to arouse public opinion against Japan. Why would they want to do that? To take attention away from their own internal mess. I just spent four years there, and I know. I lived there six years myself. Oh, not that I have a tremendous admiration for the Chinese people. Oh, I see. Some of my best friends are Chinese, huh? <laughs> right, here's our drinks. Here's to you, Joe. Oh, thanks. Excuse Mr. Condon. Yes? Mr. Miller has just made entrance. Oh, thanks. Uh, excuse me, boys. I've, uh, I've got to see Ollie. Say, Ollie, uh, Nick's been looking for you. Gotta buy him a drink. Gotta buy everybody a drink. <laughs> hey, hey, did you see our front page? Kind of light, huh? Come on, set him up. Hey, will you get a load of that roll? And look, a ticket, see? Two tickets for home on the SS Nagaramaru. Leaving tonight. Uh, I want to know about that dough. Come on, Ollie, where did you get it? Forget it. I'm quitting this godforsaken land. I'll probably settle down and write a book. And if I don't write a book, I'll, uh... Oh. Oh, hi, Nick. Hello, Ollie. Excuse yourself. We're going to have a little talk. Oh, sure, Nick. Anything for Nick. Say, was that a story you broke? You know what my wife said? Edith said you're just about the best. <laughs> All right, Ollie. Where did you get that money? I might well take offense at your tone, but I prefer to remember you are my friend and former employer. Former employer? And just attribute it to your jealousy over my good fortune. You quitting me? Tonight. Me and either. S.S. Naga tomorrow. I'll try it again. Where did you get the money? Nick, take a tip from me. This place is getting hot on the inside of Fujiyama. Get out. You mixed up in anything shady? Me? Ollie Miller? <laughs> <laughs> now, don't forget, Nick. Naga tomorrow. A deck number 23. Whole sweet. I'll fill you with champagne, tell you how much I love you. Man's best friend, you dog. And so long now. Got things to do. Lots of things to do. Hello? Hello? Sergeant Oshma? Yes? Officer Hitchikata reporting, sir. Miller has just left Continental Cafe. He has been speaking with Condon. Good. Follow Condon. Don't let him out of your sight. Hello, Edith. Why, Nick, come in. Thanks. Say, I, uh, I saw that husband of yours a little while ago. Told me the news. Where's the big lummox now? Don't know. Probably be along soon. Well, uh, Ollie was on the level. Look at those trunks. Lucky we've got two staterooms, Nick, all this stuff. Yes, Nick, we're leaving. How does Ollie explain it, Edith? He doesn't, but I don't care. Just as long as we're going home. Oh, he said something about a contract for a book, advance royalties, scads of money. Mm, fine, fine. Nick, I don't care. Maybe he stole the Emperor's treasure, but we're leaving. Sure. Oh, I, 
I just don't want to see him in a jam because of anything, well, irregular. Well, if there's anybody he'd tell what this is all about, it would be you. Well, that's what's worried me. He hasn't. You'll be at the boat tonight? Oh, sure. Maybe he'll open up then. What time? We're going aboard at 10. Hmm. Oh, Nick, I wish you were coming with us. <laughs> Thanks, Ernie. Well, uh, I'll see you at the boat. Ah, uh, good evening, Condensat. Well, Sergeant Oshma. <laughs> We're standing at the gangplank long. Sorry if I kept you waiting. Why do you wish to board ship? Say goodbye to some friends. Any objections? Perhaps Purser here has questions. Our name, please? My name? Why don't you ask Officer Hijikata? He just ducked behind that packing case over there. He's been tailing me all day. Freeze to answer questions. All right, I'll give you an answer. I'm thinking this is a new law and stupidity even for the Imperial Police. I'm Nick Condon, and I'd like to see Mr. and Mrs. Miller, Suite 23, A deck. Anything else? Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Miller have not yet arrived. And I'll wait for them on deck. Uh, sorry, not permitted. Oh, well, that's okay. I've got a press card, see? I'll see you later. Oh, come back. Let him go. Police will take care of this. Nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-three. Hey, anybody home? Ollie, eat it. Ollie, eat it. Is that you in there? Can I come in? Eat it. What kind of a gag is this? Okay, I'll turn on the light and well, if it's eat it. Oh no, no. <laughs> This is Nick Condon. I want Charlie Sprague and quick. Yes, Mr. Condon. Hello? Hello, Charlie. Charlie, this is Nick. Listen, there's trouble. Edith Miller's been murdered. What? Yeah, don't ask any questions. I'm phoning from the dock. When I went into Ollie's suite, someone was leaving. A woman. All I saw was a hand when she closed the door. A hand with a ruby ring. Look, I'm coming right down. Find out where the ambassador is and get a call through to him right away. Uh, sure, Nick, sure. Uh, say, is uh, Ollie with you? With me? Well... Yes, he's been trying to reach you. Said it was urgent. Then he said he'd catch you at your house. Okay, well, maybe he's there now. I'll phone you from there. And not a word about this to a soul. Oh. Ollie! Nick. Nick. Ollie, Ollie, what happened? Five slugs. I'm still alive. Who did it? Who did I? Who shot you? If I'd known they were going to be so tough, I'd have asked for more money. Nick, the paper today, that was a good guess. It's true? All of it. You don't have to guess anymore, Nick. Here, this envelope. Take it. What's in it, Ollie? The Tonica plan. Official copy. Sure as now. I'm glad. I'm glad Edith got away okay. Tell her I... Who is it? What are you... Very sorry to disturb. So am I. Beat it. Desperate criminal. Escape police. We must search. Nick, it's the plan. Hide it. They're after it. But where? I'm time. On the wall. Picture of the emperor. Hide it behind the picture. Thanks, Ollie. Wouldn't dare disturb picture of emperor. Edith. Tell Edith I'm sorry. I, I missed the boat. Ollie. Open I, the I, door. Oh. Open. Relax, Oshma. I'm coming. Criminal may be hiding here. My men must search. Dogan, Nanika, here. Ah, see on floor, Sergeant. So, criminal is here. Don't you mean victim? And let him alone. He's dead. Oh, too bad. However, we must still search house. Zembo, Sagate. Oh, no. Well, did you find what you're looking for? No, we did not. Now you come with us to make report to Captain Yamada. After I phone my office. <laughs> not permitting telephone. Come, please, come. Oh, uh, good morning, Kandan san. Hello, Yamada. Can I use your phone? Thanks. Hello? Tokyo Chronicle, please, Mr. Sprague. Well, call me when you've got him. Start explaining, Yamada. Among other things, my country doesn't like its nationals thrown in a jug overnight without any charge. Uh, without any charge? Sergeant Oshima, Officer Yakata. Our report is on your desk, Captain. Oh, yes, sir. Much esteemed editor had celebration in home. Gaiety intense. Causing complaint from neighbors. 
Police make for right request gaiety sees. Request ignored. Or uh, police enter home, find Nikraft caught on very much under influence of sake. Attempts to fight police. Bradley police put Mr. Condon in city jail to protect him. Oh, fine. I'm beginning to catch on. Uh, because holding you in much esteem, you are now free to go. So, hello, Charlie? Oh, no, Nick. Go home and get some sleep. You had me up all last night. We even woke the ambassador. I don't know how we're going to alibi it. The Japanese paper will follow what you did last night. Never mind, never mind. Pick me up right away in front of the city jail and bring along a camera. Okay, Nick. And hurry. Now, I'd like to do a little talking, Yamada. Yes? I'm making a charge right now against Sergeant Oshma. Oshma, you killed two Americans last night. One in the Nagatamaru and the other in my house. You have proof? Uh, Gundan San and Saki have big fight last night. Uh, Saki win. I suppose you weren't at the harbor either last night. Is your Carter? And at my house? Ah, uh, better you forget bad dreams, Gundan San. Go home. If I may try big joke, <laughs> hope not to see you here again too soon. We'll see, boys. We'll see. Come on, Nick. What am I doing here at your house with a camera? You can put it away, Charlie. You told me Ollie was dead, that his body was here on the floor. It was. Don't you see? Just look around. They must have come back again last night. They cleaned up everything. Even the blood stains on the floor. Even the... What's the matter? Isn't the Emperor's picture straight? It's gone. What's gone? Never mind. Don't you see how they framed all this? So they framed it. But what's behind it? If Ollie and Edith are dead, what happened to their bodies? I don't know. And that woman in the boat with the ruby ring... Well, you've got to believe me. Nick, somewhere along the line, all this ties in with that story of yours in yesterday's paper, doesn't it? That's an understatement. If the things you printed about Baron Tonica were true... Here we go again. Come in! Mr. Condon, please. I'm Condon. What is it? I am Mr. Ayashi of the Foreign Office. Well... Please permit me to escort you to audience with His Excellency, Premier General Baron Tanaka. I'll be glad to see Baron Tanaka, Mr. Ayashi, this afternoon. His Excellency awaits you at his home, now. Oh, so the Baron has plans, huh? I wonder what this one is like. James Cagney and Sylvia Sidney return in Act Two of Blood on the Sun after our intermission interview. Our guest tonight is the lovely young wife of one of RKO's talented producers, Mrs. Richard Berger, a dancing star before she married Dick. Not dancing these days, are you, Sherry? No, not since Dick has been in Hollywood. I did my dancing on the New York stage for Lawrence Schwab and Ziegfeld and other famous producers. Ever dance in the movies? Yes, in the days when they used to shoot dance routines on the stage of a New York theater. And your specialty was? Acrobatic routines. I did one in my last <clears throat> show that was so strenuous. Phew, it makes me tired to think of it. That was when I really appreciated Lux, Mr. Kennedy. Yes? Why especially? Because my stockings took an awful beating. But they stood up amazingly well. You see, I discovered that the wardrobe mistress Lux them every night. And I'm sure that's why they lasted so long. An old Broadway and Hollywood custom, Sherry. Yes, on Broadway, the wardrobe departments had a motto. Don't trust to luck, trust to luck. And I follow that rule in my own home. It's a good one, isn't it, Mr. Kennedy? It's a good rule for women everywhere, Mrs. Berger. Lux does make stockings last longer. Strain tests prove luxing actually cuts down runs. Rayon, nylon, silk, or cotton, Lux stockings lasted twice as long as those washed with a strong soap or rubbed with a cake of soap. No matter what kind of stockings I have, you can be sure that they'll get Lux care. Then there are Lux fans on both sides of the Berger family. I know RKO's wardrobe department specifies Lux Care. By the way, what is Dick's next picture, Sherry? Is it a story of international intrigue like RKO's new picture, Cornered? No, it's a comedy about a returning veteran. Right now, the title of it is It's a Likely Story. But that may be changed when they start shooting. Well, Dick will make a fine picture, I'm sure. And thank you for being our guest tonight, Sherry. It's curtain time again, and here's Act Two of Blood on the Sun, starring James Cagney as Nick and Sylvia Sidney as Iris. It's a few minutes later, and as he drives to his unexpected meeting with Premier Tanaka, 
Nick Condon examines the fantastic web that is being spun about him. The bold hints he published of a Japanese scheme for world conquest have been verified. Two of his friends have been murdered, and the Tanaka plan has come into his possession only to disappear. In the garden of his home, Premier Tanaka entertains two prior visitors, the elderly Prince Tetsugi and a strangely beautiful girl. Condom will be here momentarily. You will remain, Iris? I'd rather not. I'm afraid Iris is unhappy these days, Prince Tatsugi. In the future, I would be less unhappy if I were not called upon to search the effects of a murdered woman. It will not happen again, my dear. May I leave now? Of course. Good day, Excellency. Baron Tanaka, I too am leaving. But first I must tell you something. I have expressed my fears to the Emperor concerning your policies. What would you have me do? You have great influence. You still could check the militaries. I have tried, but I'm an old man and I have failed. Without armed strength, we perish. That is my view. It will lead Japan to disaster. We see the problem differently. I do not agree. Excuse me, Excellency. They are here, Mr. Hayashi and Mr. Condon. Good. Tell Colonel Tojo and Major Kajioka. Let them all come in together. Yes, Excellency. I will leave now, Baron. As you wish, Prince Tatsugi. I regret the loss of your valued support. There is no need for formalities, Mr. Condon. You know Colonel Tojo? Mm, we've met. I also know Major Kajioka, Imperial Secret Police. Well, Mr. Condon, your front page yesterday was very embarrassing. Can't please everybody, can we? You see, it was a most inopportune time for such an article. Perhaps you will explain, Colonel Tojo. Bluntly, Mr. Condon. Certain subversive factions are trying desperately to invent some sort of incident to threaten the present government. They are responsible for the malicious rumor which you regrettably put into print. Exactly. These rumors of a document bearing my name and endorsing world conflict are ridiculous. But what if they are taken seriously by the wrong people? A blazing fire would result which Japan would find costly to extinguish. Mm, I see. And you like the Chronicle to put on a Fire Prevention Week campaign, is that it? Mr. Condon, the Imperial Secret Police have just uncovered a plot to smuggle a forged document out of Japan. A man named Oliver Miller is involved. Seems you haven't been told. Mr. and Mrs. Oliver Miller were murdered last night. Yes. Uh, we read in the papers this morning of your escapade last night. In your incoherent condition, you spoke of this unpleasant fantasy. As we were concerned even more than you and Mr. Miller's fate, we immediately contacted the Nagata Maru at sea. The captain assures us that Mr. and Mrs. Miller enjoy perfect health. Isn't it clear to you now? Hmm, perfectly clear. So if you send Mr. Miller a radiogram, I am sure he will return the document to us uh, through you. You will profit greatly, and we will all laugh at the strange hallucination you experienced last night. All right. Here are my terms. When the United States Embassy has been informed that the murderers of Ollie Miller and his wife have been brought to trial and convicted, then, and only then, the thing you're looking for may turn up. Goodbye, gentlemen. But if it's so important, Nick, why meet me here at the cafe? Why not the office? Because I can't even trust our boss, Mr. Bickett. I don't want him to suspect anything. Can't spill much, Charlie. Well, after I left Tanaka, I went to the embassy. They're sending me back to Washington. Washington? But I... I, uh, suppose you noticed Bright Eyes over there. Is he Carter? Sure. He's been trailing me everywhere. What if they find out you're leaving? Ollie tried to leave, too, you know. The embassy's expressing a very special interest in my safe departure. Polite but official. Now, uh, Charlie, get back to the office. I want a story in tomorrow's paper that says I'm sailing in ten days under President Wilson. Why the publicity? Just a hunch. That document that disappeared, well, the police haven't found it yet. That means that whoever did take it wants to get it out of Japan. If they know I'm sailing, maybe they'll try to contact me. Now, uh, kiss me goodbye, Charlie. Looks as if I'm going to have company. Yeah, sure, Nick. Oh, oh uh, hello, Cassell. Hello, Sprague. I say, Condon, may we join you? We can't find a table. I wish you would. Oh, Condon, I'd like you to meet Miss Iris Hilliard. How do you do? Oh, hello. Miss Hilliard just arrived from Shanghai. Cassell, you're crazy. What do you mean, crazy? You had a reason for bringing Miss Hilliard here. No man in his right mind would willingly share her company. Well, Miss Hilliard, uh, how's Shanghai these days? Shanghai is always gay. For everyone but the Chinese. You arrived last night? Yes. I saw a couple of friends off in the Nagatamaru last night. 
You didn't by any chance come in on that boat, did you? Let go of my hand, please. Not until I get your glove off. Look here, Condon. Shut up. Oh. I made a mistake, Miss Hilliard. You don't wear rings. What the devil do you mean? It's all right, Mr. Cassell. I'm sure Mr. Condon will explain. Excuse, please. Telephone for Mr. Cassell. I'll be back in a moment, Ira. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Miss Hilliard. I'm not quite myself today. I'd like to make a confession, too. We're alone. You were wrong about Cassell. He isn't crazy. I wanted to come over here. Why? To meet you. I still say why. Perhaps I like your looks. Now, how about leveling, huh? All right. I was told to meet you by a friend. A very wonderful old man in Shanghai. Shan Po Ling? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, wonderful. He asked you to look me up? Yes. He said he hoped you hadn't changed. Yes, what does that mean? First, we must become better acquainted. It was his desire. His desire just became my desire. Now, let's figure out the best way to go about this. You see, I'm leaving here in ten days. Oh. Well, that's not so bad. Why don't we drink to them? To them? Hmm, to the ten days. The ten days that shook the world. Say, waiter, waiter, you've got a couple of thirsty customers. I've summoned you, my dear, because the police have just reported... You and Condon were in the Continental Cafe late this afternoon? Yes. Colonel Tojo and I are most interested in your report. I have made some progress. What progress, please? Mr. Condon finds me attractive. The introduction I arranged through Cassell worked smoothly? Excellently, thank you. Please waste no time in finding out if Condon possesses the document. It would appear that he does. It is Mr. Condon's ambition to leave Tokyo in ten days. I know. I have every hope for an early success. Hope, will not, hope alone will not suffice, Miss Elliot. Do not forget that. Daily Chronicle. One moment, please. Daily Chronicle. I'm sorry, Mr. Bickett's in a meeting. Daily Chronicle. Advertising, I'll connect you. Still too busy to seek Mr. Bickett? I have an idea you've been trying to duck me all day. Well, that's ridiculous. What's on your mind, Nick? Joe Cassell. I got a feeling you're giving Cassell my job after I leave for Washington. Well, as a matter of fact, I have been considering him. I didn't think the Japanese foreign office was running this paper. That's an insult. Nobody dictates to me. And what was Hayashi doing in your office? And what's Cassell doing in there now? It's a fine newspaper, man. Yeah, great. He ran a sheet in China that posed as the people's best friend. On the side, he set up a patriotic organization that collected nickels and dimes from the poor Chinese in the States to print anti-Japanese propaganda. Well, what of it? Oh, nothing much. Instead of printing the propaganda, he lost the dough on the stock market. 160,000 bucks. His partner committed suicide, and Cassell decided on a change of climate. I don't suppose you can prove that. All right. If that isn't enough, I'll dig up something that'll make even your stomach crawl. Will you please stop trying to run my paper? All right, I'll stop right now. Oh, now, Nick, please, I'll, uh, I'll give it some more thought. Where are you going? I've got a date for dinner. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't get so worked up about Cassell. If it wasn't for Joe introducing us, it's quite possible I wouldn't be having this date. Uh, so long, Bickett. Matter, Nick. There's something on your mind, isn't there? Yeah. I've got to know right now. Iris, after three days in Japan, uh, what's your verdict? <laughs> so that's what's bothering you. Well, I think Japan is lovely. Scenery's all right. The people you meet. The higher up you go, the lower they get. Then I'm lucky. I don't have to meet any important Japanese in my work. Work? Of course. I came here to study Japanese women. Why? Because they need help. They're not even considered human beings. They're not even allowed to think. It's against the law. And so you've elected yourself to help them, huh? Why not? I'm a woman. I've been aware of that for some time. Chinese women are learning what it means to be free. If the women of Japan felt the same way... Well, that stopped Tanaka or Tojo and the rest of them. It might help. Oh, uh, speaking of Tanaka, maybe you've read the Chronicle. What, what do you know about the Tanaka plan? That's a strange question. Nothing, of course. Oh, not a very pleasant topic, is it? Well, uh, what do you say we get out of here? Where should we go? That's easy. Where do you live? Oh. Once I'd like to be alone with you. I rather like the idea myself. Lady? Yes. Let's go home. Lady, lady, you do nothing but bewilder me. Just the surroundings, Nick. You're going to find me a most simple person. Disappointed? Well, when I am, you'll know. Let's go. Thank you. 
This is my maid. I brought her with me from China. Amma, this is Condon, Mr. Condon. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Ho Teng Seng Dip Ma? No, what an idea. What? What's wrong with a little music? I didn't know you understood Chinese. Hi, come doing, Gwen, eh? Jo and I say la. She's incorrigible. Every time I have company, she wants to turn on the phonograph. Sixty years old and hopelessly romantic. She's not exactly my type. But on the other hand, with a few alterations, you'd be... Uh... What sort of alterations? Rule one, learn never to interrupt a conversation when it begins to get interesting. Rule two, learn to sit with your chin tilted up. See? Like this. Like this? Wonderful. Now keep perfectly still for just... When a... did you leave China, Nick? Oh, fine, fine. There goes rule one. Well, I left China two years ago. Cleveland seven years ago, Kansas City in the summer of 21. Now, would you like me to go through all the other towns just to get them out of the way? I don't think it'll be necessary, Nick. I just wanted to make sure to cover everything that you might interrupt with. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to interrupt you. Why? I was just thinking. I know, thinking of changing the subject again. Now, let me tell you what I'm thinking. Perhaps I know. You're thinking I'm a desirable woman. Much more than that. Then be sensible, Nick. What I'm trying to tell you is that I'm half Chinese and half... I'm half Irish and half Norwegian. It's not the same thing. What are you trying to do? Run down the Irish? Thank you, Nick. Oh, stop it, stop it. I hate gratitude. Now, just concentrate on rule number two. I tilt my head like this. Uh Uh-huh. And I do like this. Hey, you've played kissing games before, haven't you? Oh, Nick, please. Where are you going? Look, out the window there across the street. Is he Carter? Nick, why is he following you? Are you in trouble? Certainly. (laughs) But for a moment, I forgot about it. Sometimes talking helps. Sometimes. Well, it's kind of late, Iris. Will I, uh, will I see you tomorrow? I hope so, Nick. Well, oh, by the way, uh, this guy Cassell, he mean anything to you? Only an acquaintance. Why? I've written a little story about him for tomorrow's paper. He's not going to like it. Good night, Iris. Good night, Nick. This is an outrage, Colonel told you. I won't tolerate it. I repeat, Mr. Cassell, in view of your exposure by Mr. Condon in today's newspaper, you are no longer of any value to us. Oh, be reasonable, Colonel. All you wanted of we is to stop China from getting that $160,000. It didn't happen the way we planned it, but what's the difference? The difference is our concern and the manner in which these matters are accomplished. You make it necessary now for the Japanese government to clearly state we were never acquainted with you. And just... Where does that leave me? Nowhere. Surely you realize, Mr. Cassell, that he who is not a good friend of China cannot be a good friend of Japan? Most regrettable. You may go in now, Mr. Cassell. Mr. Condon will see you. Thanks. Close the door, Cassell. If you think I'm here to beef about that piece in the paper, you're wrong. No, then what? Condon, I... I made a terrible mistake doing the things I did. I don't know what got into me. The Chinese are great people. If you'd only come to me before printing that story, knock some sense into my head. It isn't brains you're short on, Cassell. Then maybe you'll listen to an idea. You're a decent guy, Condon. And what I've got in mind will work for both of us. I'm in trouble now because of that article. That was my intention. But I happen to know you're in worse trouble. They're not going to let you get out of the country alive, but they don't suspect me. You have something that's worth a lot of money to the Chinese. You set the price. Only let me take it to China. Set myself up again with the right people, and you collect when you get back to the States. Take what to China? The Tanaka plan. Oh, you've got it, Condon. I know that. What else do you know? Plenty. Didn't I frame the introduction for Tanaka between you and the Hilliard Dame? And don't I know she hasn't had any luck yet because you're playing it very cagey? What else? That's plenty, isn't it? You smear me for selling out China while you're waiting for a better offer from Tanaka to sell out your own country. Why, you'd even... Charlie! Yeah, Nick? Take over for a while, will you? And have somebody sweep out my office. There's some dirt on the rug. Nick, how nice. But I thought you were going to phone. Excuse me a moment. I'd like to change. I'm sure you would. In more ways than one. All right, start answering some questions. You were on the Nagatamaru that night. What if I was? You work for Tanaka. No. That's a lie. You thought you were going great, didn't you? Had me shooting off my mouth about the wonderful Chinese people. Tied me up with Chan Poling. You're going to build up a case against me for espionage and then have me boxed, huh? 
Either I give up the Tonica plan, or I spend the next ten years in a Jap prison. Very cute. But you made one slip. You didn't know I knew about Cassell. Well, Cassell's just talked. May I say something? Plenty. To the United States Embassy. You're going to tell them how you killed Edith Miller? I didn't. Then you know who did and who killed her husband. Come on, who killed them? The names, Oshman, who else? What would you give for the name? The Tonica plan? No, it's too late for that deal now. What is your price, then? It may surprise you, but there isn't enough money in Japan to buy that document. Then what are you risking your life for? To protect people in China and America you don't even know? To save humanity? Come on, let's get over to the embassy. Are you sure? Are you sure you'd risk your life to protect the Tonica plan? If you had it. Don't worry, I do have it. No, you don't, Nick. I have it. Is this some more of your lies? This is the truth. Wait for me on the terrace. I'll bring it to you. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Our stars James Cagney and Sylvia Sidney will return in a moment for Act Three of Blood on the Sun. What are all those charts and figures, Libby? They're full of facts about women. For example, how many dresses do you suppose a business girl buys in a year? Dozens, I suppose. Oh, goodness, no. It's all down in charts made by one of our stores. And the number is nine. Nine dresses a year. What else did the statisticians discover? Well, these dresses take about 15% of the business girl's income. A big share. And I'll bet that doesn't include upkeep either. But, Mr. Kennedy, that's where Lux Flakes can be a wonderful help to a business girl in balancing her budget. Ever so many of today's fabrics can be safely washed at home the gentle Lux way. And it costs only about a penny to Lux a dress. Suppose you tell us just how it's done, Libby. Oh, it's simple. First, squeeze the end of the belt or the inside of a seam in lukewarm water. If the color doesn't run in water alone, you know it'll be safe in Lux. Then wash quickly in rich, lukewarm Lux suds. Don't soak or rub and rinse in lukewarm water. For quick drying, roll the dress in a Turkish towel and press out the extra moisture. But be sure to unroll it at once. Put it on a hanger to dry and your dress is clean and fresh as a daisy. Strong soap, hot water, and rough handling can fade colors and damage fabrics. Then a smart dress is spoiled. But with gentle Lux Care, colors stay bright and fresh up to three times as long. So stick to Lux Flakes, the care you know is safe. If you can't get Lux the first time you try, try again. More is on the way. Lux is such thrifty care for nice things, it's worth waiting for. Here's our producer, Mr. William Keeley. After our play, we hope you'll join us backstage for a brief chat with tonight's stars. Here's the third act of Blood on the Sun with James Cagney as Nick and Sylvia Sidney as Iris. Just how closely Iris Hilliard is bound to Japanese treachery and Japanese espionage, Nick Condon doesn't know. But now as he stands in the terrace of her apartment, she places in his hands the infamous document proclaiming Japan's plot for world domination. This is it. This is what Ollie Miller gave me. That's why he died and his wife died. Where'd you get it? That night, when they put you in jail. I was waiting in your garden. When they left, I found it. Behind the picture? Picture of the emperor held no fears for me. I'm not Japanese. Tell me, how close did I come in my article the other day? You missed, Nick, by millions of square miles. This is a plan for world conquest. China's only the start. Well, just what do you think we'll be doing while all this is going on? Sleeping until the bombs start falling. They're counting on that. That's why it's so important to get this to the outside world, to China, to your country, so the entire world can see before it's too late. But the Japs will simply claim this is a forgery. You've got to find some way to keep them from squirming out of it. It can be done. This document can be authenticated with the signature of someone who was present when the plan was drawn up. Who, for instance? Tanaka himself? Colonel Tojo? The Emperor? You don't believe. But there is a man who loves Japan as fiercely as he hates the militarists. Prince Tatsugi. And you think you can... There is a chance. Darling, I, uh, I hate to ask stupid questions, but how do you get mixed up in this? It's my work. 
And the payoff is much bigger than rubies, Nick. It's a free china. That's why I had to be sure how you felt about it. And about you. Oh, Nick. Nick, if only we, we had met before this. Why couldn't it have been years ago? It's ending for us so soon now. Ending before it could even begin. Oh, wait a minute, darling. I'm still alive. Yes, Nick. Very much. So much I can't bear to think of it otherwise. Then come here. Come here. You are not displeased, my dear, that I come to your apartment? I'm flattered, Baron Tanaka. Iris, I am concerned. I had hoped the document might already be in your hands. I'll be very happy when this is over with, Your Excellency. Politics and intrigue are not my special talents. I promise there will be no more politics. No more intrigue. I shall be very grateful. It is I who am grateful. I have even brought you a little gift. I dare say you were expecting more rubies. But this, this is a necklace. Oh, it, it's beautiful. A virtuous woman. Her price is far above rubies. A quotation. From the Christian Bible. It should remind you of something else from the same source. See? The necklace is made of little silver coins. Thirty coins. Thirty pieces of silver. No, I'm not going to kill you, Iris. I'm going to give you a chance to save your life and my honor. The fact that you betrayed me last night was discovered by Colonel Tojo. There are dictaphones in this apartment. Unfortunately, there are none on the terrace. But the man, the name we wanted to hear most of all, we still do not know. Whose name, may I ask? A traitor in our government with whom you have been working. I have nothing to say. You have two hours in which to make your decision. If I do not receive a call from you naming the traitor, your fate will be in the hands of Colonel Tojo. Weigh carefully the possibilities of such a future, my dear. I shall. Most carefully. Do not attempt to use the telephone unless to call me. I will be at my house. I allowed Miss Hilliard two hours. I have heard nothing from her. There is but one course I may follow. This is why I sent for you, Colonel Tojo. Excellency. And you, Captain Yamamoto. We understand. You will see, Colonel, that the woman is punished. Let her body be found in her apartment. It will be as you wish. I have planned for our divine emperor. In the execution of these plans, I have been deceived. And thus, have failed. For you, Captain Yamamoto... For you, Colonel, I pass the sacred obligation. I pledge never to sheath the sword of the samurai until our armies march through every capital in the world. I swear the same. America will be crushed. If the gods are kind, I will be in the White House when Japan dictates her terms of peace. I have prepared my ceremonial robes. Meet me before the shrine. I shall do what must be done. Tokyo, April 10th, to all news services. Baron Tanaka, Premier of Japan, died suddenly tonight at his home. No official statement yet as to cause of death. Believe Tanaka suffered a stroke. This is Mr. Osaka. He's the apartment manager. Uh, Mr. Condon, I have told Mr. Sprague. I have seen nothing of Miss Hilliard or her servant. I've been trying to get her for the past 12 hours. Did Miss Hilliard have any visitors last night? Uh, early in the evening. Uh, Baron Tanaka. Well, you know where Baron Tanaka is now. With his ancestors. Come on, the pass key. The pass key! Uh, this is very irregular, but if something has occurred... Iris! No one here. You look on the terrace, Charlie. I'll try the other room. Are you satisfied, gentlemen? It is quite obvious Miss Hilliard is not here. She took a run-out powder, Charlie. A run-out powder. I can't understand. She had five days now to contact me. It's too late to worry about her, Nick. Your boat's sailing in three hours, and you've still got that piece of paper. Yeah, but if nothing happened to her, she wouldn't have... Uh, stay where you are. I'll get it. Who is it? Porter for Rugged. Take two boats. Just the porters, Nick. Freeze, uh, where is Rugged? Right by the door. Ah, uh, you are Mr. Condon? 
Yeah. Four pieces rugged. Four baggage checks. Count checks, please. Just put them down. I'll take your word for it. Uh, sorry. Must take checks, must count. All right, let me have them. One, two, three, four. We take rugged now. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Thanks. Meg. Quiet. Four baggage checks and a note. Look. Wharf at foot of Horobata Street. Iris. It's a frame, Nick. Easy, easy. Hitchy Carter's around outside somewhere. Why does she wait until now? It's after nine o'clock. Your boat sails at midnight. That dame's just trying to hang a spy rap on you. Nick, for the love of Mike, you're not going to Horobata Street. I've got to. But Nick. Nick, it's me, Johnny Clark. Clark? From the embassy? Come in. Well, I'm certainly glad to find you here, Nick. Hello, Sprague. Evening. Where'd you expect to find me? Frankly, in a Japanese dungeon. But somewhere on this island, you have a good friend. We just received a telephone call at the embassy. Who was it? Wouldn't say. But a warrant's out for your arrest. You're suspected of being a Chinese agent. The ambassador sent me over in his car. I'm driving you to your ship, and I'm to officially place you in charge of the captain. You'll be immune, Nick. Just like a diplomatic mail pouch. Well, so long, fella. Bon voyage. And get going. Thanks, Charlie. And thank you, Johnny. Yes, I'm going, but, uh, but not with you. I'll see you at the embassy in an hour. Nick! In an hour, Johnny! all right? Below the docks. This way. There is a fisherman's hut. Close the door, Nick. I light the lamp. One whole week nearly, not a word from you. I couldn't get through till tonight. You still don't trust me. I do trust you, but... Then come with me. There's another room in here. Good evening, Mr. Condon. Prince Tutsky. Mr. Condon, you will agree there is very little time to waste on explanations. That's right. Miss Hilliard and I feel it would serve our purpose most effectively if I signed the document you carry. Naturally, when this is made public, its authenticity will not go unchallenged. My signature will be branded a forgery by my government. In that event, Your Highness, your voice will give them the lie. May I have the document, please? Here. Thank you. I have a pen. The length of time that will elapse between the exposure of this document and my ability to speak will be very brief. In Japan, a traitor's voice is quickly silenced. Mr. Condon, I do this not for your country, but for mine. I would rather see Japan defeated than triumphant under the heels of our militaries. Goodbye, Miss Hilliard. Goodbye, Mr. Condon. Can you get out of here all right? I will be all right. Lady? Lady, would you mind very much if I were to kiss you? I don't believe I'd have the strength to move from this spot until you did. And now we've got to get out of here. It's all arranged. In a few minutes, a fishing boat will take us out to a freighter in the lower bay. Us? You're going with me, Nick. They're searching for you now. If they arrest you... I see. I had an idea you were back at that warning the embassy got. They were going to send me out under diplomatic immunity. Diplomatic immunity won't stop a bullet. Leave with us, Nick. For me. For you? Are you worth that? Mm-hmm. Hey, honey. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? Hurry! Police are everywhere. Prince Tosuki, they kill him. Nick, this way. Wait, wait. But look, they're swarming all over the docks looking for us. The fishing boat, it is coming. You don't have much time, darling. You're getting on that boat alone. I'll hold them here until you get a start. No, Nick, they'll kill you. Get going. No, the plan is all they want. Leave it here. Leave it, Nick. Can't do that. I won't go without you. I won't. Look, darling, we've got jobs to do. Nobody gave them to us, but we've got to be done. You're my girl now, aren't you? All right, then. You're going to do what I want you to do. I know it's tough. It's tougher to go than it is to stay, but you, can, you can't hold them off, and I think I can. All right, Nick. I'm your girl. Here. Take the document. It's up to you now, darling. And hurry, please. This neighborhood's getting awfully run down. Goodbye, Nick. Don't tell me it's you, Oshma. I have sent my men away, Connor. 
This is a delight I'm reserving for myself. Ah, now it's a gun, huh? You've given up strangling. But that's right, you had given it up. You shot Ollie Miller. It was his wife you strangled, wasn't it? She was a very foolish woman. But when it comes to taking a man with your bare hands, it's too risky, isn't it? You are clever, Mr. Condon. There's one flaw in your cleverness. It is as easy to kill you with my hands as with that. In fact, I prefer it this way. Japanese fashion. Then stop stalling, butcher boy. Come and get me. Condon has escaped from Subida docks. Has been seen at foot of Arca Street heading toward American Embassy. Secret police running both sides of street with instructions to shoot on sight. Uh, are there further orders, Colonel Tojo? I think not, Yamada. I think not. Embassy. 400 feet more. Only 400 feet more. Only... They beat you to it, Condon. You've got to run for it now. It's your only chance. Run for it. Both sides of the street. Run. Run. Turn on the sunlight. Fire. Oh. 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 Most essential, we detain you. Oh, what a bunch of sharpshooters. That the best you can do? Clip me in the leg? Search him. Get the document. You uh, almost got away, Mr. Condon. But Japanese very smart, too. Only half smart, monkey. Only half smart. You see, I don't have the tonic of plan. What's going on here? Get out of my way. Oh, uh, Mr. Clark. What the devil is this, Yamada? Who's the... Uh -huh. Nick. Hello, fella. Said I'd be back in an hour. Sorry I'm a few minutes late. Yamada, this is not going to be treated as another of your very regrettable mistakes. Condon is enemy of Imperial Japan. Insist he must be... We must not be hasty, Hijakata. Uh, Mr. Clark, extremely sorry for occurrences this evening. It is true Condon has been enemy of Japan, but uh, Japanese people are very generous. We will forget bad actions of Condon. You, in turn, will forget this incident, huh? The United States government doesn't settle for a deal. What's the matter, Yamada? Afraid of the penalties of failure? But uh, it is much simpler this way. Both sides have made mistakes will be uh, very embarrassing for all. Let's come out in the open with it, Yamada. You and your assistant monkeys have, have just pulled an ambush. Right now, you're planning a bigger ambush. You're buying scrap iron, molding guns, building ships. You've got a swarm of busy little men running around our factories with cameras. But they're wasting their time because you can't photograph spirit. That's something our country has that has always had. That your spies haven't told you about. Oh, condom, son. Uh, we made mistakes. Yes, and one of these days you're going to make your big mistake. Then you'll meet our fighting men. In your skies, on your seas, and finally on your land. When that happens, Yamada, don't try any so sorry. Just start digging. <laughs> Stars return for their curtain calls in just a moment. Who's the letter from, Sally? One of my friends in the South Pacific. Hmm. Is he in the Army or Navy? Neither. It's a girl in one of the volunteer services. She's been out there for over a year. This letter is really a shopping list of things she'd like sent her for Christmas. Such as? Oh, writing paper for one thing. She wants it gay and flowery, as a change from the ever-present mud and dust and steaming undergrowth. And a large bottle of toilet water. Something that smells fresh and sweet and clean. Ah, the eternal feminine. <laughs> Wait till you hear the rest. Three slips, the most delicate, frivolous ones I can find. I shouldn't think they'd be very practical in the jungle. How about the laundry way out there? Well, she says that after wearing a uniform for a year, she longs for something glamorous, even if it doesn't show. And as for the laundering, she won't have to trust them to the natives. I'm tucking in a big box of Lux Flakes, enough to last her over two months. Very thoughtful, Sally. Keeping delicate under things glamorous is the job for Lux. Actual tests prove that Lux care means longer loveliness. Lingerie washed in Lux stayed lovely and new looking three times as long as identical garments washed the wrong way. It pays to give under things gentle Lux care always. 
If your dealer is out of Lux, try again soon. More is on the way. Lux is worth waiting for. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Our play has an epilogue starring James Cagney and Sylvia Sidney in two very popular roles as themselves, although we enjoyed them thoroughly as Nick and Iris. Thank you, Bill. After all these years, it's good to be working with you again, Bill. Let's see. It was about five years ago we made The Fighting 69, Jimmy. Well, I was thinking further back than that, when we were all on Broadway. Seems to me I've heard of William Keeley playing Shakespeare. Didn't you play Romeo and Juliet, Bill? Yes, with Ethel Barrymore. And earlier, with, in Richard III, with Jack. That must have been about the time that I was practicing dance routines, trying to get into vaudeville. Were you in vaudeville very long, Jimmy? Mm, long enough. When vaudeville died, I was afraid they'd have me up for manslaughter. <laughs> Well, Shakespeare's been dead for 300 years, but still I managed to murder him. You know, Sylvia, I remember seeing you in a graduation play at the Theater Guild School. And I thought then that you were on your way to stardom. I hope you're back in Hollywood to stay. Yes, this time for good. I'm on loan out now to Hal Wallace from William Cagney Productions to make a picture called The Searching Wind. What are your picture-making plans, Jimmy? Well, my next will be A Lion is in the Streets. That's a great story. And it's a mighty timely and important one. Like tonight's play, I believe a picture can be good entertainment and still have a message. Blood on the Sun is an important reminder of what we're up against with a Japanese military cast. And they aren't dead yet. An important reminder that a lasting peace has got to be a strong peace. Which is another way of saying, put your money into victory bonds. That's right, Sylvia. This current victory loan drive in the United States may be the last chance we'll have to invest directly in the future of America. And I don't know of any more gilt-edged investment. I'm sure that goes for all of us, Bill. Now, what are you and Lux presenting next week in this theater? Next Monday night, we're bringing our audience, United Artists, recent comedy success, Guest Wife. And our stars are Donna Michi in his original screen role and Olivia de Havilland as the charming married woman who finds that posing as another man's wife can lead to highly amusing complications. That is, for everybody but the individuals involved. It's a very entertaining story, Bill, and I wouldn't miss it. Good night. Good night. Good night, and come back again soon. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Donna Michi and Olivia de Havilland in Guest Wife. This is William Keeley. Saying good night to you from Hollywood. Blood on the Sun was presented through the courtesy of William Cagney, whose next production will be The Stray Land. In connection with the current victory loan drive, the Lux Radio Theater believes you would be interested in President Truman's comment on the contributions of the motion picture industry. In expressing his gratitude for what he called the extraordinary service of the industry, the president continued, We are aware that without the assistance of the screen, we could never have presented our problems to the people as fully as was necessary in order to assure a united national effort. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our men and women overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our Lux Radio Theater production of Blood on the Sun, starring James Cagney and Sylvia Sidney, has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Flakes, the tissue-thin soap used by smart housewives everywhere. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Guest Wife with Don Amici and Olivia de Havilland. The Spry Treat of the Week. Spry croquettes, tempting golden brown croquettes, so crisp and tender crusted they break at the touch of a fork. Delicious? Mmm. For crispy, full-flavored fried foods, get pure, bland, all-vegetable shortening at its creamy best. That's Spry. S-P-R-Y. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Guest Wife with Don Amici and Olivia de Havilland. And why not tune in a half hour early to hear Joan Davis over most of these stations? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.